Okay, here's how we're gonna prep this AEM, uh, the, this box for clearing the, the firmware. It needs to be out of the vehicle. Uh, don't try and do this. Uh, it, you can if you want, if you wanna plug all these, this happens to be a 60-50 box. So um, if you wanna plug all, uh, take out all these uh, different plugs out and de-pin one pin down to just two wires where it's plus 12 volt, and in the ground, you can do that. It's much easier to take it out of the car, have a little power supply um, with little alligator clips and just jump a couple pins. So anyway, um, it needs to come out of the car and you're gonna remove these four screws here in the front face. Okay, now you got that done. If you flip it over, you'll notice four more screws in the bottom. This actually holds the um, the board uh, to the bottom of the plate so it doesn't bounce around in there. So you need to remove all these two. These are a lot shorter than, than the other ones. Now, you need to pull these little side stickers off. This front plate will come off, okay? <laughs> Note that this is now uh, voided. <laughs> so uh, if, if you do this and these stickers, and you'll notice they leave a little void. So um, if you've done this, there's, there's no turning back. It's not like, oh yeah, I never took it apart. Uh, they, can, they can tell. So anyway, now, carefully, slide it out and now you have your circuitry um, actually outside of the box make sure you're uh, this is on a clean rag or you know make sure your hands aren't really greasy you should not be touching the circuit board um, with with greasy fingers or any kind of nastiness but um, just to show you real quick on the next uh, in the next part of the video let me see if I can't get this up here you might be able to see those are the two pins that they're talking about, doggone it, right there in the instructions. You have to jumper these two pins whenever you're doing the power supply into them to actually clear the firmware. But anyway, there it is um, out of the case, and now we can move on to the next step. Okay, so what if the worst happens? What if you lose voltage or your laptop dies or you drop your laptop or you get a crazy USB connection for whatever reason whenever you're doing this firmware update? Um, what you can do, there is a way to fix this. You can go up here to ECU, clear EMS firmware. Okay, Make sure you read this, but I'll tell you what it says. Uh, click I understand and click next. You're going to need to remove the ECU out of the car. Do not have any other pin hooked up to anything in the ECU other than one 12 volt uh, plus 12 volt switched and one power ground. That should be enough depending on the circuitry in each board to be able to do what we're going to do but the ECU needs to be out of the car out of the case and you need to jumper this pin right here it gives you a little picture you can use an alligator clip you can use you know whatever you want to just as long as these two are jumpered okay this uh, the, the other thing is this has to be done with serial serial to USB connection. You cannot do it with USB to USB. So uh, we're going to, I'm pretty sure this is on column one for that. The EC needs to be uh, powered on so it needs to have 12 volts going to it. Okay, now if you've got those two pins jumpered correctly <clears throat> and you've got power and ground going to it and you've got everything right to this point, you've got the right COM port, you'll get connected. Okay, right here and then you're going to go to the next step which is flash succeed alright that's good so now we'll go to next alright now you can follow these instructions you can now close the program remove the jumper and reconnect to the EMS using tuner now this still has to be done with serial so don't think you can go back and use USB just yet so go ahead and read all this okay 
and <coughs> we will power cycle this EMS. So we turn the key off, remove the jumper. Okay, and then we're going to go up here to ECU connection preference. Make sure it's on a uh, serial port, COM1. Make sure uh, the rate is on series 2 because you're using a series 2. And it should, I haven't actually tried finding uh, finding it, but it, it should connect even if it can't find it there. Here, we'll, we'll wait on this. Oh, I didn't have power on, that's my fault. ECU connection preference, serial port, COM1, series 2. Okay, this is normal. This is good. ECU is running on an invalid firmware version. This is normal. You have to upload a valid firmware first. So click OK. Now we're just going to, it doesn't matter which one, just any of them. And then we can go ahead and upload a calibration again. Doesn't matter. Click OK. And there you go. So it's clearing the old corrupted firmware that, uh, that happened whenever you're trying to update and for whatever reason happened. So it's, it's completely clearing everything. You're uploading a brand new firmware with a brand, brand new map, and hopefully, hopefully you have your old calibration saved. Otherwise, it's gone forever. So let it do its thing. Takes a couple minutes. <coughs> and after all this is done, you can then reconnect with your USB. But all this needs to be done with serial. And this is one of the reasons why they went to USB because serial is safe. <coughs> you should have just skipped doing your calibration. This took forever. This will work if um, if you're trying to do a firmware update and it's corrupted, or if uh, for whatever reason you have um, so sometimes uh, old old EEPROMs will will get corrupted for various reasons. Generally, it has to do with uh, some USB connection or uh, uh, power spike or something like that. <coughs> I've had a number of times where I've I've had to do this. Um, much easier on the on the series two. Series one is no fun. Again, this is slow because it's it's still on serial because I haven't switched the cables yet, but um, you had all this has to be done on serial connection. Okay, there you go. Now you're updated and you've reset the firmware and you should be good to go.